What's up besties? I hope you have a sensational day. Um, so for a long time I've been using Autodesk Sketchbook, but in March this year uh, Clip Studio Paint had a sale and I decided that the price is great and, I, and that I really want to move on to a, a program and I figured now it's a good time to just gather my thoughts about the differences between the two and how it influenced my art and my, my creating process and just put them together. Um, no, I don't claim to be an expert. I'm mainly making this video to maybe come back to in some time and see what more have changed to just document my progress. Um, also, I'm still learning. Uh, I feel like I'm much better than I was those what, uh, seven months ago. Nonetheless, I might still not get some stuff, so sorry for that and let's go to the topic i don't usually make proper intros to my videos i don't know what i'm doing uh also i'm only going to talk about drawing i know both of these programs have some animation tools and i think in clip studio you can also make 3d models um but i've never used any of that so i have nothing to say um so here you can see I'm redrawing my profile picture, same design, pretty much different lighting, a bit more realistic proportions uh, in the original version I wanted to have a bit more of an insect, you know, moth uh, look, with big eyes and round hair, but it just didn't work so I decided I'd go for an auto portrait, um, just without a terrible amount of attention on, on whether or not it's accurate. Because, you know, if I don't think comfortable showing my real face here, why would I feel comfortable showing a realistic drawing of it? Uh, but, when I, but when my sisters worked on me drawing, she guessed it's supposed to be me, so these are pretty much the shapes and proportions. Uh, my friend actually drew it too, uh, some time ago, and I must say I love it so much. Like, I don't think many things happen to me through the internet that might be equally happy. Like, this is so awesome, and like, I, just the fact that someone would do this, like, all his socials are on the screen right now, please go visit, he makes some really cool animations, which are in Hungarian, but there are English subtitles, so that's great, and he draws, and uh, I, if you saw me gesticulating right now, you would just think I'm probably crazy, because, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm just... I just uh, got emotional for some reason. Um, so yeah, I'm coming down. Um, uh, when it comes to my version, uh, you can see there is no background in the end, uh, just flat purple color. I might draw something another time and add the. Um, but for but for now, all I was able to come up with uh, looked bad. Especially that it's a profile picture, so there can't be too much going on there, uh, not, to not to distract from the character. But when it comes to sketchbook and clips to the paint, uh, first thing that was at the beginning an obstacle, but now obviously when I've been using it for a bit, um, isn't the Autodesk sketchbook is quite simplistic, so initially I just didn't know what is what and where are the features I need. Um, now obviously there is just more of them so it wouldn't be possible to keep everything as simple and visible. Also it's not like Clips to the Paint uh, is super complicated either. Uh, honestly, honestly it's not. Um, I'm saying that as someone who still can't properly use GIMP, Clips to the Paint is definitely easier to use than GIMP. <laughs> And in the long run, I think that now that I'm used to where things are, it's actually more convenient to use. Um, also, when it comes to layer settings, and I think this is called blending mode in English. Uh, there is more of there is more of them in Clips of the Paint, and the ones that are in both programs don't all don't always work the same. Like I honestly prefer the way overlay works in sketchbook, but overall obviously Clips to the Paint wins because there is just more options. Uh, now the main features Clips to the Paint has and other the sketchbook down uh, that were complete game changers for me. Um uh clips clipping layers and that basically allows you to make a layer, clip it on top of one below and and only the stuff that are drawn in the area that is also part of the layer below are visible. 
So for example, if you have a layer for skin, uh, let's say you have all of the skin in one layer, and you want to add freckles and want to make them on a separate layer, you can just clip the layer and then they're all where they're supposed to be, not around the face or anything. Um, uh, correction layers, I use mostly gradient maps, so basically I often color stuff in grayscale and then choose what colors I want to have there. Um, and a bit, you know, once I have it colored, I have a lot of choices and I can change my mind uh, uh, many times. But there are also other ways they can be used, like for changing saturation, like I use in this drawing, or hue, or other color changes, um, or other color changes. Um, I can also outline layers automatically, which basically replace my outlining process. I just outline everything by selecting layers while on a separate one, choosing the uh, outline selection tool in the edit options, and then just erasing or adding a bit when, when needed. Um, layer masks, which basically allow you to erase stuff from the layer but be able to easily get it back. I don't really know how to explain it, but it's very useful. I don't remember there being any filters in Sketchbook either, and they can be quite useful too. For example, when I want a layer to be evenly blurred, but there are also some more fancy ones. Um, also, when it comes to custom content, also the Sketchbook has some brush packs available to download, and some of them are really cool. One thing I appreciate is that when you download the pack, it immediately, it imme it immediately goes into your brush folder, uh, in Clip Studio Paint it goes into your downloaded folder, and then you need to unpack the brushes you want to whichever folders you want them to be, which is not stupid, but just takes a few minutes sometimes. Um, now, maybe there is another way to download brushes in Sketchbook than in the program itself. But the catalog in the program isn't too big, so there's that. In Clip Studio, in comparison, there is a whole section when you can search brushes, texture, textures, and other assets made by other users. And there is a lot to choose from. But some apps aren't free, but you know, you can still find the offer ones that are good. Uh, now when it comes to making brushes, because in Sketchbook I've made quite a lot, um, same like with layout. Uh, Sketchbook is much simpler, but Clip Studio Paint provides more options, and so the brushes people make are just more complex, and, but uh, I personally can't use them correctly yet, but I can enjoy what other people uh, use them for. Um, I remember when I was trying to make a fish brush, make a show on my mermaid drawing, Actually, the mermaid from the drawing, whose name I won't even try to pronounce, reached out to me on private messages in, on Instagram, like, hey, are you doing mermaid? And I was like, maybe one or two drawings, because it takes me too much time to be able to post daily. And she was like, well, maybe you could do my drawing in a sales challenge. And I was like, yeah, maybe I could, and I did. Because she's been super nice to me even bef before, and it looked like a fun joint in your style challenge. And yeah, I'm mainly sharing the story to say that I've talked with a mermaid. Um, coming back to uh, the brush, I drew a bunch of different fish, and I think I should have registered them as separate material. Um, but I didn't. I registered them. I registered the whole cluster of them, <laughs> all randomly spread on the canvas. So now, anytime they appear, they're in the exact same distance and position to each other. And also, I wanted uh, them to be mirrored sometimes, so that you know, uh, sometimes they swim to the left and sometimes to the, to the right. But instead, some are just upside down. Yeah, but they've served a purpose at least. <laughs> Nobody seemed to have noticed. One thing I've actually liked more about Sketchbook is the gradient tool. Clips of the Paint has one too, obviously, uh, but once again, the Sketchbook is simpler. You can see you can see on my older drawings that I've been using it for hair, filling pieces with quick gradients, and then working on top of that. Uh, now I don't do this, um, as you can see, because making a gradient takes me much longer, so it isn't the shortcut it used to be. Mm. Oh, and I don't think Sketchbook has the fingertip smudging option, though I might remember something wrong. It's not as big of a deal as, for example, clipping, la clipping layers, but still, it's a pretty useful tool. 
example, so in Sketchbook, uh, there is a so-called uh, steady stroke, which basically looks kind of as if I'm putting the line on some string, like a like as if it was sled, for example, which allowed me to have steady strokes, but with full control over them, uh, because the correcting tool uh, usually just makes my line simpler, more straight, with more sudden curves, you know. Um, I wouldn't expect from a program to understand what I want to do exactly. Uh, I've been looking for the sewing clips of the paint, but I don't think it has it. At least I have the outline selection to, to make up of, to make up for it, so I don't really have to do the hard work there, here. Um, so when it comes to my overall thoughts, uh, I think that using Clip Studio Paint definitely made me draw faster with better, better effects. Um, because, you know, the tools just make, make uh, of what I would struggle with easier and it's just more convenient and overall wins in most aspects. Uh, I would never go back and yeah, I love a lot of things it allowed me to do. Obviously, if you want to say something more about any of those programs, uh, maybe compared to some other ones, you know, uh, or you have advice when it comes to my use of them, or just the drawing in particular. I, because I'm honestly still not exactly satisfied with it. Um, I think I'll come back to this in some time. I would love it if you left a comment down below, uh, so we can just share our experiences. And for now, just stay safe, uh, stay hydrated. I forgot to mention wearing masks in a bunch of videos now, because I wasn't going outside, but please wear your masks. 